In a world full of roses, be a sunflower. Or in the creed of the Sam's Automatic Car Coupler Company, in a world of knuckle couplers, be a Lincoln pin. In 1893, the United States government passed the Safety Appliance Act, a law that required railroad companies to install standardized hardware to every revenue-producing railroad car that facilitated the safety of railroad employees. Over the years as it was amended, the Safety Appliance Act mandated regular inspections and the addition of ladders, grab irons, stirrup steps, brakes, couplers, and other integral no-brainer equipment that is common on every railroad car today but was decried by the robber barons on Wall Street as being radical socialist ideas. Who cared if the poor were killed and maimed on a daily basis by unsafe, non-standardized equipment? As long as the shareholders received their dividends, that's all that mattered. The unions cared and were able to convince Congress that the United States needed a single cohesive legal code to minimize the possibility of work injuries caused by unsafe rail cars. With the passing of the Safety Appliance Act, the race began to provide a coupler that met its requirements. While the new law, as originally written, set out standard expectations for car couplers, it didn't actually say anything about what kind of couplers. It only required that the couplers were automatic and operated without a man standing in between two cars. The Master Car Builders Association, a non-governmental council of the Wizards of Railroad Shops, convened and decided that the MCB automatic coupler would be some variation of the Janney or knuckle type. However, these cast couplers cost little more to manufacture than link draw heads, and corporate bean counters were willing to risk the lives of a few thousand more expendable laborers rather than pay the few extra dollars per car to install knuckles. The course of this race shifted to design a Lincoln pin coupler that met the requirements of the Safety Appliance Act. Occam's razor applies to inventions. The simplest solution is the best. Too many of these automatic link and pin couplers relied on ridiculous and easily damaged mechanisms and lever assemblies that would be difficult to repair and expensive to replace. The same excuse is given against installing knuckles. The genius of the SAMS automatic coupler is that it was merely a normal link pocket with a normal link. What makes it work are two small tweaks in the shape of the pin and the pocket castings themselves. The pin is an X shape, with fins that allow it to rest in a ready position, and only drop in place when the shock of two cars hitting each other knocks it loose. The pocket's floor is angled upwards, allowing a ready link to be held in a position that will slide easily into the receiving car without handling. No extra parts and no complicated assemblies. The Rio Grande Western Railway, which was a predecessor of the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, operating between Grand Junction, Colorado and Ogden, Utah, became a fanatical adherent to the Sam's Gospel. In 1895, the company rounded up the worst freight cars they could find, specifically hunting down cars with weird drawhead heights, unusual lengths, and swayback frames, and equipped them with Sam's couplers. They then spent a day slamming them together in the yard at Salt Lake City at different speeds, at different positions on curves, over turnouts and on grades, even with mismatched heights and positioning, the Sam's coupler still functioned flawlessly, and the Rio Grande Western was sold, equipping its entire fleet with the design. The superintendent of motive power, John Hickey, waged a war against the knuckle coupler, insisting that the Master Car Builders Association was wrong in recommending it. Although this type of coupler has had powerful support behind it from railroad companies, the press, and legislatures, he wrote in an 1899 letter, it has proved the most expensive to maintain and apply, uncertain as to security of coupling and disappointing as a means of safety. It has no merit as an automatic coupler or as a means of holding cars together. The coupler is a failure, a substitute must be found for it, and the sooner the better. History has proven Mr. Hickey wrong, of course. Two years after his scathing rebuke on the knuckle coupler, the Rio Grande Western's owner and president, the famed General William Palmer, sold the Rio Grande Western to the Denver and Rio Grande which company he had lost control of back in 1885. The Denver and Rio Grande immediately standardized its entire system, installing knuckles where Hickey had insisted on Sam's pockets. 
Even as the bean counters and shareholders whined about costs and expenses, the value of safety and standardization won out and the Janny Knuckle became the standard automatic coupler still used today worldwide.